Good bark. Good bark. Good bark. Coming right down the hill. You know, I've been working for Andy now. This is my third full season. And I've been able to come down here and film hunts in Nevada. And I've always been just like, man, Nevada looks like a cool state. There's a lot of deer, there's a lot of animals, but it just takes so long to draw normally. I was lucky enough to snag a tag in a leftover draw. This normally takes 15 to 20 points for a non-resident to draw. I had zero points and I was able to snag this tag. We had planned to go up and around this mountain, back up in kind of these back basins, but see how bad the road is, as well as get in there and possibly just see if we see any deer tonight. It'll kind of give us an idea of what we're looking at for tomorrow morning. There's a deer, there's two deer. Looks like a dog I found. All right, so that makes seven. Eight, that's a buck. That's definitely a buck. Now let's see if I can find him in the scope. Two bucks. One's pretty nice. One's a big two point it looks like. That's a giant two point. Like giant two point, <laughs> like he's thing. this tall. And he's that wide. I think we saw 16 deer, four of them being bucks, something like that. But it was really great. Saw a nice four point, um, but just not the caliber that, you know, we were really looking for. Deer are just popping up everywhere now that it's starting to get kind of late. It's kind of one of those things, you know, when you get to a new area, you always tell yourself, man, I need to see a deer in this landscape. Because once you see a deer in the landscape, you're like, okay, that's what I'm looking for when you start scanning. And as soon as like we picked up that first deer, like it was like, oh, there's a deer, there's a deer. Oh, there's some more deer. Oh, there's some bucks. Then like literally went from here, we went from like right here and I just turned around 180 degrees and I was like, oh, there's five more deer right there. That gets me excited. <laughs> Tomorrow's gonna be a good day, I feel like. This tag here is a late rifle hunt, so it's the last rifle hunt that you can get. This season only has nine days, nine total days, and we decided to come that last five days of the season. The deer rut should be starting to kind of kick off, even though if you look at the historical data that it won't be around for another week and a half to 10 days, but we want to be pushing up to that rut as close as we can get before our season runs out. So four does down there. That's good. There's four up there, there's two over there, there's four over there yesterday evening. So we're finding a lot of does. You know, there's a good possibility that we could see some bucks pushing does. And kind of our tactic is to glass a lot of these big basins and hillsides that we know where deer should be feeding and hopefully find doe groups, which could in turn bring some bucks along as this season progresses. Oh, there's two more coming from the right. Oh, there's like six of them over there. 245 yards of us. Oh, now we just need the whopper to freaking come show up. You really gotta, you know, go into your e-scouting with kind of a plan of like, this is what I'm looking for. This is where I think the deer should be during this time of year, eating shrubs, maybe starting their migration a little bit um, towards their winter range. See that one right there is a pretty good buck. 
I mean, that's a pretty good four point. One of the great things about Nevada is, you know, it's 84% public land. I mean, there is so much public land here that when you get a tag like this, for me being the first time that I've been here, um, it's almost overwhelming because you're like, oh my gosh, I can hunt these different units. Like, where do I even start? I had to lean on a lot of our friends. I mean, our friends down at Go Hunt helped out a ton because luckily they're Nevada residents, so they hunted some of these units before. I reached out to our buddy Jim Heffelfinger, which he's a biologist down in Arizona. I understand this is Nevada, but he's the like the mule deer guru. Instead of having, you know, a hundred square miles to look at, I really narrowed it down to about four to five different areas that I really want to like, you know. We're gonna we're gonna go here first. This is gonna be plan A. If plan A doesn't work after a day, maybe two days, we can jump and we can go to plan B. Oh dude, he's like tearing up brush. Dude, is that was a four point? Serious he's another two point. Big two? Like big two. And he's just a giant two point. I think we've seen a total of 40 deer this morning and 10 bucks, which is pretty, pretty awesome start. We gotta just kind of pick through and just keep, keep glassing and looking and eventually, you know, one of these better bucks are gonna show up. So when we were up there glassing, I kept seeing this really white thing down here. I just kept scanning over. I was like, that's not a deer. Once we stopped seeing deer, I took a little bit more time to look at it. And it being this deadhead, I could see it from up there. See some vertebrae and stuff laying around. So I'm guessing a winter kill. Pretty similar to the bucks that we've been seeing, I would say. You know, all in all, amazing first day. The total count ended up being around 65 to 70 deer that first day with 18 of them being bucks. It, it was a really cool feeling to know that like, with the limited amount of e-scouting, the first place was I mean, just saw a ton of deer. Well, we made it back up here to what I'm calling Pride Rock. And got up here a little bit earlier than even yesterday, which is good. Like, that's why we left camp earlier. We want to be up here in that really, really prime time right as the sun's starting to peak up, which it's trying to. But we're gonna give it at least the morning, see if we can turn up any, any better bucks. I've only seen one buck so far. And it's just a two point. He's got, I don't know, a doe group of six or seven does. We just need a bigger buck to show his face. You know, instead of these two and three year olds, we need that four year old buck or something like that. Throughout that morning, I think we ended up seeing more deer than we did the previous morning. I think we saw 46 or something like that, but we only saw six total bucks that, that morning. And I think Jason and I have been talking, you know, I feel like we really covered this and that really, really well, as well as like up in here. We just haven't seen, you know, mature deer yet. Yesterday, we saw what I think is a pretty, pretty good deer way back up in this uh, basin back here. We kind of discussed it, and I think we're gonna go back, eat some lunch, 
semi early and then head out and kind of hike further back up in there. Mountain lion. See deer up the mountain and they're just constantly like, because oh, oh. these freaking predators are roaming around. Those things are way more deadly than we are. That's fresh, dude. Like last night or yesterday. pretty cool we could see this beaver dam when we were up there but we're gonna use it to kind of just get across but it's wild I mean that thing is solid like there's no water that's coming down through there you can see their house right back there You know, deer hunting's always been a long tradition as being the way to quote, feed the family. And here in Nevada, because of the limited amount of tags they give out for so many of their species, um, it's really became the, become the meat and potatoes of the Nevada ungulate species. In the early 1900s, actually, uh, here in Nevada, they had mule deer imported by railroad cars, then released into Eastern Nevada the population just exploded throughout the next couple decades. But because of a lot of unforeseen circumstances with hard winters, droughts, um, pinion juniper encroachment, as well as cheatgrass and, you know, feral horses, this population has dropped almost 50% throughout the entire state. And I mean, that's going across the whole board with the Western US, but here in Nevada, it's taken a really, really hard toll. So it's about four o'clock. We've been up here, give or take an hour, hour and a half, almost two hours. We've seen, I can still see some on there. 10 does and a two by three, three by two, whatever you want to call it. And then I was watching two does and a fawn and all of a sudden they just blew out of there and three more deer came running that way and looking back. So I don't know what spooked them. Kind of keep watching that hillside. You know, we saw those cat tracks earlier, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's just a cat slipping around in here or if they got a whiff. I mean, the wind's just kind of been swirling. As the afternoon progressed, I mean, truthfully, we didn't see a ton of deer. All right, so we've given that specific basin now two full days of hunting. We've seen a lot of does, we've seen quite a few bucks, but we haven't really seen that quote, next caliber of buck that we're looking for. I was like, what do you think about if we maybe just go somewhere else tomorrow morning and give it a morning hunt? And if we see something great, if we don't, you know, hey, we can exit off the map and go back to our original spot. He's a four by three. It's a good start. And all of a sudden, Jace is like, well, there's a buck right there. He's this big, big three by four. And I'm like, man, you know, I really wanted to try to get a four by four, but that that's probably the most, or the largest buck that we've seen so far, the most mature buck. And he's got four does with him. It's like, let's, let's make a play on this dude. Yeah. 
Wind's going straight up now. We're down there at the bottom. It was going up the drainage. And I'm like, dang, that wind's not good. So right behind Jace right here, it's that big rock face. Those deer should just be right over the edge. So I just kind of ease up a little bit higher. And right as I do, I see three does just boing, 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 out there at about 250, 260 yards. I could see the whole hillside up to where they'd went to. And I was like, well, if he comes out there, I mean, he's only gonna be, you know, 200 to 250 yards. Those does go all the way up and over the mountain. And I'm like, well, that's weird. That's only three of the does. He had four does. As I started easing up this rock face here, to get into position, I could see some does or some deer going straight away from the oh, crap. Oh, there's, there's a deer right there. Here comes another doe bouncing out of there. And I range her and she's 200 yards. I'm like, okay. I was like, the buck's gonna be after her. Like, since she's the last doe, that's who he's with. He's gotta be. And now his, all his does have left him. Nothing. Like, well, what the heck? And I stand up for just a second and I look. Oh, there he is. I am right there. To the right, to the right, to the right. That's him. He's gonna bounce out. He works up and he basically worked right to where those three does went over the hillside. Dang. Oh, well. I was looking at my map of kind of seeing where those deer filtered up and over. And they actually just kind of filtered right back towards our drainage where Pride Rock is. Where we'd seen the big two by three yesterday pushing some does and deer on that face. So, might just see him again. If that buck starts to kind of work down with his does, we can at least find him and then we'll have him located for the next morning. Another big two point with does. Imagine that. You know, some does here, a few bucks, you know, does here, a buck, but never saw all that big three by four. In 2021, the Nevada Department of Wildlife started a program called the Mule Deer Enhancement Program. That program is really working on trying to bring these mule deer populations back to what those historic numbers were. You know, maybe we're not able to get back to that quarter of a million deer population, but if they're able to, you know, just bump it up 50,000 deer over the next 10 years, I mean, they're gonna do great, great things. We've seen five total deer. We've been up here for hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, but it has been absolutely dead. We're gonna beat feet, get the heck out of here. Well, I guess I just uh, made a really bad mistake by trying to leave the really good spot to go to a really bad spot. Mark it off the list. Everything that everybody's been telling us is the last two days of this hunt is when it just turns on. The bigger bucks, the more mature bucks start to kind of just show up out of the woodwork, stay the course, find the does, the bucks will be there eventually. We got to the kind of the fork in the road that it's like, okay, if we go left, we go to back to our Pride Rock base. And if we go to the right, that's where the three by four was yesterday. And Jason's like, 
let's just go back over there and just see if maybe we'll, maybe we'll see him again. And all of a sudden, 15, 20 minutes later, here comes some deer bouncing across the hillside. Whoa, that's that three by four that we saw yesterday. And now we've got four bucks. And I think there's only two or three does up there. And one's a pretty nice four point. One's a big two point. One's a small forky. And then the three by four from yesterday is up there as well. And we're sitting there watching them and we're making a game plan and we're like, okay, let's wait till these thermals get nice and steady, come back in from the uh, west side up above them, you know, they'll eventually stand up and we can, you know, possibly get a shot. And as we're doing that, all of a sudden, deer just explode. And about 200 yards above those deer, here comes this hunter. Some blew up and over, some blew down and over. Needless to say, this hillside where we've been watching these deer, is completely shot now. Kind of sucks, but it's like, hey, that dude was getting it at, getting after it, obviously, because he's already up there on the mountain way before we were ever even here. I'm starting to think, I'm like, oh man, tomorrow's day five. We can hunt day five and then possibly hunt into that next morning before we've absolutely got to get out of here to get back to Montana. Made it back up here, Pride Rock. We're just gonna give it the day. Here comes this fog layer, like no other fog layer I've seen. It came straight up the valley floor, up into our basin, and basically completely socked us in. Looks like Lord of the Rings, or not Lord of the Rings, what was that show? Game of Thrones, winter is coming. And all of a sudden across the hillside, now that that sun's coming up and it's starting to really light it up, I see this deer just working its way down this hillside really, really fast. I tell Jason, I'm like, hey, get on that buck. So he's phone scoping it. And all of a sudden he's like, well, you just ran into another buck. I'm like, what? Uh, that left side, I can't see a point, a fork on the front. Three by four. He's got some, it's definitely heavy. It's like I can see one front fork, but it, I think he's just a three by four. But look how much bigger body size he is than that other buck that's right beside him. He looks like the most mature buck that we have seen this entire trip, by far. He's out there 800 yards, 1,000 yards, and now we see him go and go right up over this little saddle just up the mountainside from where we had glassed on that rock from the afternoon of day three. We're gonna wrap the backside. The other day we went this way up there, but we're gonna come back around. We'll see if it works. So he's gotta be. We never saw him go up the hill. We never saw him go across the hill. If we come in from this west side, we can probably just sneak right up in there. We could stay below where we think he went. And we're gonna just sit it out the whole day and really, really study that hillside right there around us. And all of a sudden, Jason's looking and he's like, oh, here's two deer running down the hillside right here. They come to like a hundred yards and they're just rutting each other like crazy. I'm watching them through my binos. There's, there's more deer coming down the mountain behind them. There's a pretty good buck in there. 
good luck, good luck, good luck. Like, we're gonna get a shot at this dude. What is he? See that three by four by from earlier? Well, dang, that's that four by three from this morning. He's under the tree, right? I think so, yeah. Where's he at? He should be at the base of that tree. No, okay, yeah, I got him. 219. It's, it's the buck from earlier this morning. Two by the three by four? The three by four, yeah. Just need him take a step. He's a heavy buck. Wait for him to step out. Is he feeding? Yep, 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 yep. Get ready. Get ready. You on him? Yep. You hit him. He's still there. Yep. Stay on. I think he's gonna go down. Dude, he looked like he was hit hard. He fell over, he just fell. Are you sure? Yep. Dude, that's the buck from this morning. He's heavy, man. And he came right back. I can't believe that worked out as well as it really did. That's awesome. Yeah. My first Nevada buck. First time hunting in Nevada. Thanks, buddy. He's got some solid mass. Whew. We get to looking at him, and I mean, he's just got a huge body. He's got mass in his antlers. It's a beautiful buck. Everybody was saying, if you can just find the doe groups, stick to the doe groups, eventually these mature bucks will show up. It worked out so well. It was such a fun hunt. It makes you understand why people wait 10, 15, 20 years or more to get some of these late season rifle tags. I'm, I'm really thankful for this amazing landscape that we were able to hunt, these amazing animals that we were able to hunt, and then also having Randy as a boss that said, you guys should find ways to like, really get some more content this year. And I found a cool way. <laughs>